Hey everyone, this is Tony over at Cantina Creative. Today I wanted to go over the LiDAR drone look that we used in Furious 7. For this film, Cantina did work on numerous concepts, designs, comps, and looks. With Furious 7, when we first began, the very first phase was developing the design language of the God's Eye. That began here at Cantina with Alan Torres and Sean Cushing. You can watch Alan's overview of this design phase as he explains that process. Here we have an individual that starts with a concept, then that ripples out to a team of designers and animators that refine and build upon that. And I really do challenge you to work with your peers and build out an effective workflow. This is not something that is always taught or considered while in school or working on personal projects. In many cases, when you're working on your own project, you know, you are the designer, the editor, the director, the compositor. Everything is all up in your head and you have this one hard drive that holds your whole life. And, and if anyone opens your project, they just freeze up while offline media starts popping up and projects called final, final, final dangle from a jump drive on your keychain. But, you know, being on a team, that all changes. So I encourage you to start now, stay organized, modular, so other artists can navigate and help out. Try working on projects that you start and someone else finishes. So let's go through the drone view used in this film. I want to discuss the overall process that we used, basic workflow solutions, as well as the techniques used. For example, we will jump into PF Track here, we will go through C4D projects, and we'll bring it all together inside of After Effects. During our conception phase, we got to meet up with the VFX supervisors for the movie. One of the ideas that some type of LiDAR look that could be a POV of the drone. This would work in conjunction to the HUD that Cantina was already building out. The team over at Universal, they were really open to different ideas and concepts, which, you know, makes it really fun and exciting for us to work on. Just remember, ultimately, you are trying to build something that enhances the story, guides and pushes the storyline, and has some direct correlation to their original ideas or thoughts. So, you know, I always say don't get too lost in the weeds. Don't get too lost in the conception phase. Set some boundaries with your client. This is why your initial meeting is so important. To get a direction, ask questions, set your path. These are little tidbits that pay off big time when you begin designing your look. Okay, so now we get to flush out some of the LiDAR looks. And you may be kind of thinking like, what is LiDAR? Maybe you do know what LiDAR is, but really anything that shoots laser beams is worth checking out. But LiDAR basically, think of radar. Radar emits radio waves. They hit a surface or object and then bounce back to reveal the object. The radar concept also can be used with lasers, with light. So light is emitted and then the calculation of its return gives a distance and visual representation of what it is bouncing off of. So reference is important. The reference we looked at for inspiration reveal that color was within a vertical column. So the color was not global but took on values based on the Y axis. So we need to figure a way to build a color map in 3D space while in our 2D comp. So let's get to some rules for our concept. You know, some of our rules here are light can't go through solids. Color is mapped by height. The emitter is usually the receiver, you know, blah, blah, blah. So we have these rules that we want to decipher from but we can break some of these real world rules if we need to. This movie is Furious 7, so basically don't be afraid to break a few rules if you need to, um, you know, for the sake of doing something fun and exciting. You know, as long as the story has the leeway to let you do so. Okay, so LiDAR. Let's say we only use it when the drone is trying to target. We can have it scan the environment within our targeting HUD. We can do a sweeping motion, give it some energy that doesn't compete with the HUD. Let's make the movement of the sweeping LiDAR feel like it's hunting when we animate this sweeping motion. The particles. 
Is this purely done in C4D? We can map particles to the surface of geometry, maybe X particles, thinking particles. These are all cool solutions. I like to try to build a solid solution that we can do multiple variations of. A solution that is modular and that is easy to communicate with artists when teaching them the method. For me doing the R&D, these particles were taking really long to render and I wanted a method that would allow us to do revisions in less than a day if necessary. So spending all night to render a scene may not be the approach based on the resources we had. So what worked well for us was to track the live action plate and PF track, model and animate our geo in C4D, and to apply all the particles and after effects with Plexus. Sometimes as an artist, we can get so far down the rabbit hole. I can find myself deep in the creative process with multiple tests running and different looks all being generated. Try to have the end game in mind or it can be tough to reverse engineer out of. I prefer to stay away from those one-off methods and use all the production tools that are involved in the final look. So the R&D and look development are being developed simultaneously. Finding the balance of what is looking cool, having the flexibility to do multiple variations, having efficient render times, and ease to mass produce with the team, this can set you up for success when starting off. Let's look at a few of these shots. The first thing I want to do is look at the live action plates and troubleshoot some of the issues. Motion blur, camera zooms, whip pans, time remapping, things that may trip you up before we start. So PF track was great for us. You know, we could transfer the match move right into C4D. That is one reason I like this workflow. Keep it simple and expect editorial to change the speed of the shot. It is important to understand that this is the offline edit. Editorial is going to make changes. So be liquid and flexible in how you build your comps. If you are interested in the full PF track breakdown or want a refresher on PF track, you can find that video on our website labeled PF track overview. So after tracking our plates in PF track, we took those tracks into C4D and began to model the geometry. Now we did have to keep in mind that there was another vendor also modeling geometry and working with sped up plates. So eventually all that geometry needed to be passed along to us and we needed to merge it into our scene. One of the things that we always need to think about is how to work smart. How do we minimize the versions, final the shots, and understand the scope of work that is within the edit? This is where working hand in hand with editorial will save time and money when translating over into VFX. So once we built out our scene in C4D, the idea here was to create geometry that would mimic our environment. But based on some of those rules we set earlier, we need to only have geometry that was seen line of sight of the drone's POV. I didn't want to see through the geo if possible. We had some wiggle room, but this was the basic idea here. The way the particles were going to be built out are mapped on to this geometry here. So we needed to subdivide our geometry and visually see how this looked inside the comp. So there was a lot of back and forth between C4D and After Effects to get these particles to look proper. For us, the AE solution allowed us to kick out multiple versions and explore different looks. If you're interested in a more detailed breakdown of this particle effect, you can check out the demo that we have posted that goes over this. Overall, this was a team effort. Multiple moving parts that all came together to give us a result that the director was happy with. A project can go off the rails if you let it, so it's important to consider these phases during your projects. Reference. Find inspiration to support the overall vision. Optimize your workflow for a team environment to produce results. Work smart. Keep the end game in mind while you manage your time. Make something cool and be nice. Have fun. We're all in this because we love it and it's important to understand that. I hope this sheds some light on the process and adds some insight to your own workflow while you make some amazing work. This is Tony from Cantina Creative. Happy renders.